There are a few essential things our bodies need to boost our immune system and stay healthy, especially in a colder season. Me and my family use Z-Stack, Z-Detox, and Z-Flu developed by the great Dr. Zelenko, who has a place in history for his tremendous life's work. With every purchase of Z-Stack or any other of Dr. Zelenko's products, you also support the Zelenko Freedom Foundation in their tireless work to bring back medical truth and freedom to everyone. To save on your Z-Stack order today, use coupon code INSPIRED. Please find the link to order down below. Hey, hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us for another Inspired Conversation. We are welcoming back our great friend, soul brother, filmmaker, true fighter, freedom lover, Frank Jacob, the now canceled Frank Jacob. How are you doing, my friend? <laughs> Good to see you, John. Yeah, I'm the now canceled Frank. Yeah, well... <laughs> Frank, uh, I want to actually lead with that today before we dive into the plethora of information that we're going to go through today. Uh, uh, it's going to be a packed show. But Frank, you you were just canceled. You were ju you just experienced, probably not for the first time, but in a real, very physical way, what that means. What happened? Well, it's just it comes down to in Germany when you um, when you want to uh, host an event, you have to rent a facility. And so this gracious person um, hosted this event, sponsored it, you know, created the um, marketing for it and rented this facility and put up some posters. And then what happened was that some of the members of that place, that facility, um, I guess, I don't know, somehow word it got out or they, you know, they looked, they looked closer at the poster because the poster was talking about what the subjects were. And the subjects were, you know, looking glass, you know, transhumanism, um, you know, CO2 scam, you know, UBI, uh, all this stuff, artificial intelligence, you know, the stuff that, that we talk about, that I talk about, that I've been talking about on this circuit for the last year, pretty much. But I guess in Dusseldorf, um, it just, you know, the one woman in particular on their panel, you know, got all hot and bothered when she saw the word CO2 because, you know, she was a de devotee of the man-made CO2 scam. And uh, so when she saw that, she assumed everything else was all just phony baloney. And uh, so she talked to all the rest of them into voting it out. And then they sent the, the hostess a nice email and said, oh, you know, the, we've canceled the event. And so they tried. They even went back, tried to go to bat for me. And no, they're, they're totally brainwashed. I mean, they're just forget it. There's no way. So it just makes you realize you can only get every in if you trick people by not disclosing what you're talking about or like other techniques, which I think you've told me about. But if even that, eventually they'll catch on to your game. And then, you know, they'll ban you, they'll cancel you wherever you go. And that's happening uh, to a lot of people. I've hap I've watched it happen to others in Germany who aren't even going at, at some of the brisker subjects that we are. Like, we're really just, you know, you and I are kind of really going for the jugular when it comes to the truth. Like, we don't try to soften it. We try to look at all sides with the information that's truthful and not water it down. And there's a lot of people that don't even go that far. They're still doing a lot of service and getting information out there, but even they're getting problems. I think um, we, it's safe to say that there is another group of people this time, they're not um, classified by race, ethnicity, or religion. They're classified by their speech, which might be considered free speech. So free speech is now a discriminated against uh, group of people. You could say that. It's literally that way. I mean, who else gets more shit than we do? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Frank, congratulations on this cancellation. It speaks volumes about your spirit, the true spirit. Uh, we touched on many subjects that um, it caused a lot of upheaval uh, after our last conversation. And we want to yeah. we want to pick up where we left off and, and dive into this, maybe uh, explore and explain a little more what our true intentions are but nonetheless, not sugarcoated. So what do you have for us, Frank? Well, after that last show we did, I got barraged with a shitstorm of emails and comments. And, you know, because in a way I um, figuratively speaking, sacrificed the figurative holy cow of the human, you know, transhumanist new age movement, the, you know, the godmother, uh, Barbara Marx Hubbard, you know, and this is something that a lot of people, especially in the circles that I'm in, you know, because I'm a filmmaker and because I'm a support person, I'm, a, I'm also a tech person, a producer. So I know all these people. I, I move in these circles and these people know me. I've worked with them. I've created films. I've actually produced their videos for them. Um, and 
it's just something that, you know, it rocks the boat when you start to actually question them because they're considered million sellers. Some of these people, they have millions of followers around the world. They've made millions of dollars, right? And uh, so what I was showing in the last show and what we talked about and got into was not that these people are bad. Let's say like a Greg Braden or Joe Dispenza because of their connections to a heart math. We don't want to, you know, uh, destroy all the good work that they're doing. All the, all the information that they're putting out, the science that they're revealing is amazing, fascinating. A lot of it is true. But it's always this sort of this pink elephant in the room that nobody talks about. It's always this tends to be this kind of feel good, new agey stuff without embracing the fact that there's obstacles to get that stuff out there. There's been an active campaign over more than a century to block and stop and in, in some cases physically eliminate people who are putting out the future technologies which really could save our planet. And this is something that isn't really talked about. So it's the fine print. So like, are they guilty by association or not? Does a Greg Dispenza, or sorry, does a Joe Dispenza or a Greg Braden know that heart math is in connection with Barbara Marks Hubbard connected to the Rockefellers and their foundations, right? That they have themselves inter intimately integrated and woven into their whole fabric of existence that the funding comes from. We know very much that if you follow the money in the end, it's the funding which will you know, hamper the message from getting out there. This is one of the reasons why we never go for funding with our films. You know, we try to get private people to invest because we don't go even crowdfunding because crowdfunding kind of puts the sign out there and says, hey, guys, we're going to put a rock, a film out there that's going to rock the planet. Uh, so come and target us. <laughs> so we don't, you know, we stay under the radar. And so I wanted to finish because, you know, it really isn't clear just to some people how deep these connections are really all about, like how the, the Marx Hubbard connection as the hub of the spoke of the whole wheel that leads to HeartMath and others like the Esalen Institute. They're all pitching transhumanism and they're all with the words out of their mouths are not saying organic human, you know, consciousness evolution. They're all leaning on technology. And that is the crux of it because you cannot deny that even soft tech, like the tech that um, HeartMath is putting together, you know, this M wave and stuff, it's like, it's just going to lead to, it's like, you know, you can't, if you start a beer, then you're going to want a scotch. Then you smoke a joint, you're going to want to try hash. You know, it's like, it seems to always kind of go deeper and deeper, right? It's like you always, the temptation is to go further. And the temptation with tech is, okay, we've done this soft tech. Uh, what else is there? You know, how far can we really take it? But and Frank, I got to interrupt gone. you here. We have to, we have to establish a baseline um, reality check here. We are not in the year 2005. And slowly there are reports coming out about more artificial intelligence stuff. We're in the year 2022 and we are in World War III and the war is against humanity itself. It's not against a nation, a religion or, or an ethnicity. It's against the, the principle of what we are. And we, you and I said before we went on camera, we said, well, you got to pick a side. You don't have to fight. You don't have to pick up a weapon and actually fight, but you have to pick a side and know what you're here for. So the exactly. question is that we're asking, what are you actually standing for? Because we all have admired your work, Greg Braden, Joe Dispenza, and so many others. We have learned from you. We appreciate you. We have a deep connection that we feel to you because we've been uh, reading, watching, learning. And so it comes from a from a from a real deep place that we ask you, what do you stand for? Do you stand for the real organic human being or are you a proponent of the artificial uh, transhumanist posthumanist route? That's the question we ask. Right. Right? That's beautifully said. I mean, this idea of the baseline is exactly that. That's, that hits the nail on the head because it really is coming down to that. We are at a crux in our evolution on the planet where we actually have now not just, you know, some movies fantasizing about some future where humans and there's robots and, you know, we're actually now around the corner and already developing the tech which will lead and create and manifest a totally artificial world if we want it. And in the end, you know, even if all these people say, you know what, it's inevitable, um, that's where we're going, we're invested in it, we're doing it. You know, that's cool, too. Then just stand your truth, right? So we know where we stand. I have no problem with that. What I have a problem with is people that 
put on this idea of like, oh, human potential and stuff like that. And in the end, they're not disclosing what they really mean is not biological human potential, because that's what I'm into. Yes, you know, and, and so I, I have to make a decision here. Do I cut loose all the fat in my life of things that are just weighing me down? And we always talk about this, right? The timelines. How do the timelines manifest? They manifest because we give it resonance. We resonate with a certain idea and we give it our energy. We give it our investment. We invest in that timeline. This is what it's always about. It's about these timelines, right? So, so I wanted to dive into some of the stuff that we only just touched on a little bit last time and, and just read through a few of these slides because it's a good starting point for a meaningful discussion. Yes, sir. Please do that. Yeah. So, you know, here we are basically with the idea of the patron being the Rockefellers, right? And I want, I encourage everybody to go and check out John Klechek's article. I have the link at the bottom there. You know, I was um, played this article. Somebody shot it to me a few day, weeks ago or a couple of weeks ago, and I checked it out. And, you know, it's like, I've gone further into all of his links and, you know, but I, I think he summarizes a lot of good things here. So let's just go, a few, go through a few of his ideas as kind of the fundamental, let's say, baseline. Okay, so to midwife the techno-etic trans-evolution of the universal Christ mind idolized by Fuller and Teilhard de Chardin, Hubbard set up the foundation for conscious evolution, which was seed funded by Lawrence Rockefeller the brother of John D. Rockefeller III, David Rockefeller, Nelson Rockefeller, and Winthrop Rockefeller. Got enough Rockefellers in there for you? <laughs> Lawrence was president and founding trustee of Rockefeller Brothers Fund, which is a corporate philanthropy that finances social impact investments, where have we heard that before, in biotechnology and digital technology. These, of course, are key building blocks in the Internet of Things and Internet of Bodies matrix at the crux of Hubbard's transhumanist dreams of collective conscious evolution. Lawrence also bankrolled esoteric studies into Gnostic Christ consciousness and noetical parapsychology, right? Rockefellers are doing this, okay? And for those who don't know what Noosphere is, I mean, sorry, Pierre Tielhard de, uh, de Chardin, he is sort of the grandfather of the Noosphere, which he fathered in 1947. This stuff is not new. They've been, like I say, they've been ramping this stuff up for the last pretty much century. And he is kind of the forefather of the idea of the noosphere, which is the idea that life moves from, you know, uh, from the body toward the sphere of mind, right? Which is where they're trying to move us. They're trying, this is what transhumanism is really all about. It's about getting out of, away from the natural body and into the artificial world. Okay, so to continue, in the prelude to her Evolutionary Testament of Co-Creation, which was dedicated to Lawrence Rockefeller, so we can't say that she's not, you know, that she's accidentally just taking their cash. She's she's woven together with, she has relationships with these people, okay? Let's not make uh, no bones about it, right? Hubbard lauds how he was instrumental in helping her found the foundation for conscious evolution with the great, this is her quote, with the great gratitude, I dedicate evolutionary testament, the promise will be kept to Lawrence Rockefeller, who recognized its purpose to help bring forth the Christ of the 21st century and supported me in forming the foundation for Christ conscious evolution to bring it forward into the world, right? This is her foundation. This is what she bases her work on. This is where she draws all the people in that she tries to put together, the people that she endorses, the heart maths, right? The, uh, the Deepak Chopras of the world, right? They all are connected to this foundation of conscious evolution, right? According to the official website of the Foundation for Conscious Evolution, this Rockefeller funded tax exempt, of course, because they always want to save their millions that they don't want to spend, foundation advances synergistic transhuman evolution driven by the advent of radical evolutionary technologies such as biotechnology, nanotechnology, quantum computing, space exploration, etc. The tools are there to transform ourselves, our bodies, and our world. We can and are actually moving beyond the creature human condition toward a new species, a universal humanity capable of co evolving with nature, quote unquote. In other words, fueled by the Rockefeller money, the people who brought us the pharma industry, the foundation for consciousness evolution, for conscious evolution advocates for humankind to emerge with biotech 
and nanotech, quantum computers in order to evolve humanity into a new transhuman species, which Hubbard has dubbed Homo universalis. Okay, I've heard that word come from many people that I know, okay? They may not realize, you know, really what they're talking here. And this is the crux of the issue, right? Do we realize what we're really saying and believing in here? Not only did Rockefeller provide the seed financing for Hubbard's Foundation for Conscious Evolution, but he also bankrolled many of the high-tech industries, including biotech, nanotech, quantum computer, which the Foundation for Conscious Evolution sees as vehicles for conscious transhuman evolution. Right? It continues in Hubbard's book, 52 Codes for Conscious Self-Evolution, a process of metamorphosis to realize our full potential self. Code 33, interesting number there, called for human beings to come forward as a new norm in order to evolve the human species from Homo sapiens sapiens to Homo universalis. Later in 2012, Hubbard published another book, Birth 2012 and Beyond, Humanity's Great Shift to the Age of Conscious Evolution. In a section titled uh, From 2012 to 2020 and Beyond, Hubbard proclaimed that the eight years after the birth the 2012 birth leading up to 2020 will be critical for implementing the shifts necessary for us to gently grow into the next era, evolving into fully formed evolutionary communities around the world where each person can learn to transform themselves and our world into a transhumanist new world order. Her words, not mine, right? And where have we heard the idea of a rare opportunity to reimagine our world? From Klaus Schwab. I think, I think you know that man. That man, the pandemic represents a rare opportunity, right? Yes. He does. Right? So this is this is the this is the first stop I want to make. Okay. Because we just covered a lot of material there. Which is, you know, I wanted to see I wanted people to see that how intertwined this whole money complex artificial reality is to these money people that are tied to central banking and to the pharmacology industry. The point that people did not see up until very recently and still very few see is that a lot of people knew about the new world order, but they didn't make the connection on how this was actually going to be brought about and that it was always a transhumanist agenda. I mean, Bush Sr. talked about this privately and I, and I know it, I have it on good authority behind the scenes uh, in, in, Direct ways. That's he knew artificial intelligence the future. When we look at Rockefellers and when we put Rockefeller and philanthropist in the same sentence, that's about the biggest joke in human in human history. The Rockefellers are, to the best of my knowledge, to the best of my intuition, not even of the same species that we are. I don't believe they are. I really don't. They hate. They hate humanity. They hate humans. They think they're peasants uh, at best. At best, they're slaves and peasants. And everything they have done has been to the detriment of human society all over the world. So to put that in the same sentence is, is the biggest irony. And if you associate with the Rockefellers, all you got to do is pick up an autobiography. Pick David Rockefeller's autobiography. It's He, does, he doesn't even hide it. It's not like they're hiding. They can't. Right. Their, their no. hate is, is everywhere. And so that's what they're putting out. So... Um, this close connection, and, and, and another point, and I want to get your take on this, Frank. What we see here, Rockefellers do something really beautifully. They stay behind the scenes. They stay in the back. What they do is trickle-down influence. They put their money and seeds at the, at the top of the pyramid where they think these people are trickling it down. So the, the, the Bradens and the Dispensas are not at the top. They are already in the, in the lower layers. And they're bringing it down to the communities. The question is, with or without their uh, knowledge and awareness. But this is kind of like you know Reagan's term, triple trickle down ec economics in the '80s. Bullshit, of course. But um, and this is exactly what they're doing. They're trickling down. Feminism was the same thing. Feminism wasn't about women's rights or actually empowering women. It completely it was the destruction of family that they had in mind, the separation um, of the parents, and all that stuff. What it was about the restructuring of society, John. Exactly. Yeah, it's where we're headed right now, and we're seeing the LGBTQ plus thing is just the next extension of tearing down the foundation of what it means to be a human being. The natural family. The natural family is the right. strongest bond you have 
it, between humans. And as long as they're natural families, you cannot break that bond. You will rather die than break that bond as long as you have it. If you don't have it, you are obedient to whoever takes that place, the state or or some religion or whatever. So if we look at all these uh, things that Hubbard said, and, and of course, who is she associated with? I mean, this is like, poor, poor, you know, you we're pulling down those masks. What do you see behind it? Do you see ill intent? Do you see uh, uh, ignorance? Or was it all one big plan from the beginning? I believe it was a, a plan from the very beginning. But I believe that um, ill intent is is a strange word here, right? Because I do believe that everybody that I've talked to that knew Barbara Marx Hubbard said that, oh, she was so sweet and she's so advanced and she's so intelligent. And I'm sure that, uh, and but I also know people that were behind the scenes where she showed her, maybe let's say, her panties, <laughs> where it was not the nice person that you see out in the public. It was actually quite abusive. And so there seems to be, there's always these two sides. There's the back room meetings that take place between these elitists, these cabal people. And then there's their appearance in the public. And they're good actors. All of these people, they've, the reason there's not many of them out there in the public is because not all of them are as good as actors or chosen for this role as those who can pull it off. Because part of controlled opposition, let's not forget, is not you know, putting out like, is not to kind of confuse um, the people with just a bunch of lies. No, the best controlled opposition is the controlled opposition that is mostly truth. And that takes a little bit of truth and mixes it with a big lie. And, and that's where, the, you know, the people that feel truth, everyone wants the truth and we feel and we need the truth. We had Richard Dolan give a great line in Packing for Mars about needing the truth. You know, but and so people get preyed upon by these people, these cabal, like you say, they do not empathize with the rest of humanity. They've grown up privileged. They've always been privileged. They're moving in different circles than we are. They're part of the breakaway civilization that we've talked about. So they don't really have the intention of humanity, the best intention of humanity at heart. They have at heart a way to steer the narrative. And so, you know, they will actually get behind well-meaning people like a Greg Braden probably is well-meaning, even though he did work, I think, for the, as a geologist, he did work in, in the um, oil industry, if I'm not mistaken. He also, he also was in a defense um, uh, yeah. industry, but, but he talks about it openly. There's no, he doesn't hide it. You know, he was- Right, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that because yeah. you can wake up inside any one of those organizations and say, you know what, I, <laughs> I've been on the inside, I've been the fly on the wall. Now it's time to break out. And he has a good story about how he broke out from it, too. But, you know, like, anyway, it's like there are people like that that I believe they are sincere, but they do not want to look at the fine print that we're exposing here. And they maybe, OK, let's give them the benefit of the doubt that they just don't know it or they don't want to see it. But the fact is, it's there and you cannot deny it. You cannot deny. Heart math cannot tell me that the soft tech it's developing will not lead to harder tech which leads to, well, we'll talk about that next. That's where I want to go next. But, but Frank, a fundamental question for you is, and here's for me, I, I, I read the autobiography of a yogi, Paramahansa Yogananda, and his gurus and his teachers. And even and, and Paramahansa lived uh, till the middle of the last century. So he already saw technology and its rapid, rapid rise. But never was there a even the hint at, oh, this will be the future of consciousness. And the reason maybe it wasn't imaginable at that time, but I'm I'm wondering if you go into deep meditation, if you have this beautiful spiritual organic experience, who would think, oh, let's hive it, let's let's harness it and put it into an artificial space? Why would you do that? We have all the capabilities. Why this push? You see, that's my question because I know what's possible. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna show you why today. Okay, let's dive into it. <laughs> I'm going to show you why, because <laughs> this is a this is a really I, I'm at the at the end. Don't f let me forget to put this up because this is a, it's a mind number. Okay, it's okay. something we're all going to have to grapple with. All right. So, but anyway, let's continue on with uh, where this is leading. This whole transhumanist thing. It isn't just the idea of having tech and and blissing out 
you know, with, with heart, you know, synchronization with the whole planet and locking into the Schumann frequencies. Those are all good things, right? But it leads somewhere. And this is what I want to talk about next. So it goes on, okay, about Christ consciousness and cybernetic transhumanity. In her 2001 book, Emergence, The Shift from Ego to Essence, 10 Steps to the Universal Human, Hubbard relayed how Teilhard de Chardin's noosphere is what we might call the thinking layer of Earth, or the mind sphere. Think of this noosphere as an invisible yet all-pervasive superorganism. Here each of us lives much as our own cells live inside of our body. The noosphere is composed of our collective consciousness, as well as the intelligence that is creating our extended bodies in the form of rapidly growing technology including the internet, biotechnology, nanotechnology. Okay, this is all true, okay? What she's talking about is true. And this is the thing that's the crux of it all. This leaning on scientific facts about the noosphere. I talk about the fact that there's the field, that we feed the field and we draw from the field and we have this connection that's tied into the earth and the Schumann frequencies. Well, they call it the noosphere. So they're, they're, they're sort of edging in on that terminology, it's all about sort of hijacking the technology over to their side. During her 2017 speech, Awakening the New Species in You at the Global Purpose, always global, isn't it? The Global Purpose Movement's Purpose Summit in San Francisco, Hubbard declared that Teilhard de Chardin's noosphere is now the internet nervous system of the planet. And there's enough of us now to wake up our planetary nervous system through high tech, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, robotics, genetics, all of that being the powers of our mythological gods. Okay, and now we're touching into the essence here. This is about the gods, the godhood, right? And um, it goes further. In some, Hubbard believed that by harnessing biotech and nanotech robotics, genetically engineered human bodies can be melded with quantum AI which will evolve human beings into transhuman cyborgs who can achieve godhood by summoning the collective consciousness of the noosphere through the internet of things and the internet of bodies, inverting the biblical gospel of how God humbled himself to descend from heaven in order to incarnate into the human body of Jesus Christ, Hubbard preached Teilhard de Chardin's transgnostic gospel of how humans must exalt themselves as gods by technologically evolving into alter-human machine hybrids capable of ascending to the Christ consciousness of the noosphere. During her ION speech, Hubbard released, uh, relayed how Teilhard de Chardin prophesied that when the Mayan sphere gets its collective eyes, we will experience the Christification of the earth. Right? Okay? So... We talked about synthetic Christ consciousness. Psychopaths. I'm sorry. They're psychopaths. I'm sorry. Right. You're right. What the fuck, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this I mean, they're okay. They're just full of them. So, I mean, they're they're talking about ego stuff. This is this is the ego version of enlightenment, isn't it? Yeah, well, this is like Yuval Noah Harari, just like feel good language. I mean, Yuval goes hardcore, and he goes. He says, you know, humans are, you know, this is over. This is over. Free will is over. Right. But, but she, she goes into the, like the feel good thing, but my goodness, it sounds like Atlantis all over again. And, and that's what Atlantis, um, what was the downfall of Atlantis was a worship of the mind and the artificial intelligence, no more spirit, no more heart. And they don't understand right. they're not talking about Christ consciousness. No, they're no, they're talking about ego stuff, right? This is yeah. ego's version of Christ. Okay. And here we have, you mentioned him, right? Yuval. What is he known for? Here's a few of the quotes that are attributed to him that are kind of the crux of what he's all about. History began when man invented the gods, and it will end when man becomes God. Homo sapiens, as we know them, will disappear in a century or so. Okay, we're phasing, we're being phased out. Humans are hackable animals. The days of believing Jesus is our savior, those are over. The millions of jobless people will become the useless class, right? So this is what, this is what he's all about. And he's got his formula, right? He's got biological knowledge, sensorize everything, a la heart math or, you know, further versions of sensory devices, right? Compute power times data equals, ah, 
which is the ability to hack humans. And one of the guys that's promoting the hack humans thing is part, it's connected to Esalen. It's this guy. This guy's name is Mikey Siegel. And he talks about something called group flow. And what you see in this picture right here is essentially you see this group that hanging, they're hanging out. And what are they doing? They're wired up. <laughs> they're wired up because they're trying to figure out how to synchronize with each other, you know, to some heartbeat or to some voice or to some person, right, through technology. And they're glorified. They're all into it. It's, this guy worked at MIT and at NASA, Stanford. I mean, these people are seriously into the mind sphere, the noosphere. That's what they're all about, right? He's basically talking, and his, he had hosted a conference, and he says it right there, consciousness hacking. And if you go to his website where you see this uh, trailer and you watch this and you, you read the stuff, I've put up the banners here, broken down. You can, interesting, you, the choice of words, right? The top headline says consciousness hacking. Below it, it says tech as expression of wisdom and love. Awakening through innovation will come up. Then it'll come up bridging science and spirit, right? That'll come up. That's what Greg Braden is kind of about. Sorry. Bridging Democratizing, reality and science, yeah. Democratizing the divine. Yeah, How's democracy working for us these days? Psychedelics. Well, how's technology working, Frank? Because what I always wonder is, you know, when when something isn't benefiting society as a whole, and I'm sorry, but this technology that we have hasn't made us healthier or happier because more people are sick and more people are are on, on antidepressants than ever before. So it hasn't made us right. healthier, happier or healthier. So how does more of the same all of a sudden improve things? That's just, there's no logic behind this. And this is they what, what it gets. It's just going to be better. They think it's going to be better, better, more is better, right? So they have like, they have this website there. It's like the transhumanist website. It's called, it's a magazine. It's called Humanity Plus. And I, I just went to their website and I, I grabbed the screen grab because it says, it, just, it defines what they do. You know? What does it mean to be human in a technologically enhanced world? Humanity Plus, also known as World Transhumanist Association, of course, it's a 501c3, so they don't have to pay taxes. International nonprofit membership organization that advocates the ethical use of technology, such as artificial intelligence, to expand human capacities. The ethical use, right? Who's, who's monitoring the ethical use of this technology, right? In other words, we want people to be better than well. This is the goal of transhumanism. So that's their goal. They're stating it right clear. What is the goal, right? So this is where basically... The new age meets the new normal. And, you know, we'll, we'll get into that next. But essentially, this is where they're heading. They are basically carving out this noosphere for their huge egos because they, like Kurzweil makes it very clear. He's one of the foundational members of this, you know, consciousness university, as he calls it, where essentially they are, don't want to die. They don't want to die. They're, 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 and it comes back down, you could say, really, to the essence yeah. of what? Fear. Fear. They're, they're scared Fear. of dying, yeah. They're scared of dying. And they think that humanity, because of that process of death that you go through, even if you even go through it, because I wonder, even if that whole concept, if we've been, if that's been laid on us, right? I mean, I've met people and I've read some books about people that are very, very old. And that whole idea of cell reproduction, I mean, we don't have I to go there now. We don't have time. But, but even, even if you go through that uh, process of leaving the physical body, you yes. know what I think they're afraid of? What awaits them on the other side? They might not be w ready for what awaits them. So they want to be the gods of this world because the shit that awaits them on the other side. And, and I'm sorry, we, we don't, there isn't just, oh, this is earth and then there's heaven. There's so much more uh, bet between those those ultimate realms, if you will. Right. But please continue. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay. Well, we'll continue on with this. It's uh... Ever since the announcement of COVID-19 lockdowns, there's been a spade of propaganda campaigns from government bureaucrats, corporate oligarchs, and globalist technocrats who have been lecturing about the necessity to acclimatize, uh, to, acclimate to the new normal. You probably never heard this post-COVID-19 slogan until 2020, but Hubbard, she was prophesizing the dawning of a new normal at least as far back as 2008, okay? There it is, black and white. You cannot deny it, okay? She was talking about it. She was putting it, pushing it out there. Whether she knew it was going to go or not, she began feeding the noosphere <laughs> with, 
with those ideas. In fact, Hubbard foretold that 2020 would mark the pivotal year of the global shift toward the new normal that is transitioning the world into the futurist singularity envisioned by Google's director of engineering. There he is, Ray Kurzweil, who's the founder of Singularity University, which is the post-humanist think tank where Hubbard promoted her dreams of harnessing consciousness evolution to engineer a new transhuman species, right? So where's that leading us? This new normal, right? The new normal is, there's many definitions for it. The new normal is the idea that you get used to lockdowns. The new normal is the idea that you need, uh, that your immune system cannot function on its own without the enhancement of artificial stimulants to protect yourself from the environment. The new normal is that mankind is the great carbon sinner and causing climate change. Therefore, we need to cut back on our consumption of natural substances, which are creating carbon. Even having babies is a, is a pollutant. Some people, I've even people in Germany putting themselves up. I'm not going to have babies because they're carbon sinners, right? This is insanity, John. But Pure. they are, we are, we are, our, our physical bodies are made of carbon people. I mean, that's what the fight is against. But I want right. to just go back because before we go into the substances, the, the shots and everything, what is so beautifully exemplified through these articles, uh, you know, the, the old hag, like you called her and, and all the other, well, you and I recognize the language. You and I recognize the language from decades ago because we studied it because we believed those are great terms. Consciousness evolution, yeah. great shift, all these beautiful things. Well, it seems to be that these people intentionally put out these beautifully sounding um, words and phrases, and they weren't connected with technology back then. They were just connected with the human spirit. And then now when these transhumanists come out and use the same terms, you feel connected because, oh, these are my people. They're speaking my language. When really that was the seduction to begin with uh, is yes. I, I think I think that's what we're getting at here, Frank. Is, is that I mean at least that's what it feels like to me. Well, you know the question, John, is did they invent the terminology and feed it into what formed and became the New Age movement, or did the New Age movement you know blossom organically and those who are attaching themselves like parasites saw a good thing and figured out the best way to you know to take that information and turn it into where they want to go is to borrow those terms. You know, that's the that's up for, for grabs, right? We don't know that. Fact is, however, the terms are crossing over into both of these timelines. This is again coming back to the, to the tale of two timelines, you know. It's like which timeline are we gonna give our energy to? Do we even realize that our investment in this terminology is not, you know, to be taken lightly, that we actually could be investing that energy. Um, when we buy in, blindly buy in and accept the doctrine of these authors and speakers and thought leaders, are we giving them our energy? Are they giving it on, passing it along to the same people who have been enslaving us on the planet for more than a century, right? Are they, are, is that what's going on, right? Or are we trying, are we doing the opposite? Are we hijacking their idea? And the fact is, you know, we can't get around the idea that we are evolving consciously. There is a field out there. We do draw information from that field. We exchange with that field. Our, we have organs in our body which are naturally made to harmonize and resonate with those elements in our environment which also give us information from the outside. We just have a different way of functioning than a ro robot or that AI. And so, but the, the, the diabolical thing behind all of this is, John, is that they are, because of the whole COVID thing, because that was for them the opportunity, like our friend Schwabster there said, that was the opportunity for them to finally introduce an, this new paradigm into the world, which paradigm is the paradigm of the... We had to cut it off here. You know what happens when you speak about certain topics here on this platform. So please hop over to the Inspired Community on Locals to watch the full interview. You can find the link in the video description here or in the pinned comment. Go watch it now, you won't regret it.